This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. Everybody, how are you? I'm Alex Bennett. This is my voice right now. You'll see my ugly puss a little bit later in the program when we go to the citizens panel in about 25 minutes from right now. But in the meantime, we got a guest and we should go to him now. But before we do, I just want to tell you that um, it's uh, it's really tightening up. It's within a point. Uh, with Moore leading by 50% to Jones's 49%. Whoa, what a squeaker. That's all down in Alabama. And if you're listening to this weeks from now, it doesn't really matter, does it? Well, we'll be talking about it anyway. But right now, let's talk to an old friend. Ladies and gentlemen, you know him, I know him, the whole world knows him as Larry Bubbles Brown. Yes, the name is Bubbles, and I can't remember who named you that, Paula Poundstone? Paula Poundstone. Yeah, uh, he calls him Larry Bubbles Brown. And, uh, yes, and it's stuck. It's stuck. It's stuck. I can't get rid of it. Now, after she called you Bubbles, did you go around calling yourself Bubbles, or did you just... Uh, did, no, I think, did I think she the spread... other comics thought it was funny, so they started introducing me every time I do a set, like at the Holy City Zoo, and then uh, it just kind of stuck after that. Yeah, and, and most people just call you Bubs. Bub, yeah. Bub's good, yeah. Yeah, Bub's good. Yeah, but then that sounds like you're some rube from the South. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Bub, yeah, I... I uh, I was at the punchline in '01 with Bobby Slayton, and Nick Nolte came in, and he was wearing pajamas. <laughs> but he loved, I mean, he loved the show, and he kept, call, for some reason, he kept calling me Bubba, and not Bub. <laughs> Bubba, that was a great joke, Bubba. <laughs> uh, well, from his part of the country, I guess Bubba is something that you, you know. That... I guess. Remember, uh, he had a good career, and then he... Uh, that he remember he got arrested for a DUI and had that wild picture. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, he he um, and he and he still looks that way. <laughs> you know, yeah, like he did in that picture. <laughs> but anyway, so um, uh, your life is going good. You you worked a lot this year. You, yeah, for me, I worked a lot. Yes, but I have a very small. Uh, overhead to make so uh, i don't have to work too much but you work for like uh you, you usually open for rob schneider rob schneider uh yes felipe esparza who i don't know if you know him or not who's very funny and uh, and dana carvey uh, felipe esparza does he play to a, a latino audience it was i worked with him for about six years but now he's uh, it's getting more uh He's crossing over, yeah. So you've really done space, pretty. You've done, especially on HBO right now. You've done pretty well by being an opening act for people. That would be. Uh, that's not a bad way to go if you can uh, get in a lot of famous people to have you open for them. It's, uh, well, you know, look. Yeah. The, uh, the reason I think you're requested as an opening act, okay, and don't take this the wrong way, uh, is because of the tone of your act, which doesn't. It doesn't spoil the room for the next guy. You get what I'm right. saying? In other words, I always just talk to comics. I say, who do you want, not want to go on after? He said, anybody who does impressions or plays a musical instrument in their act. Yeah. Because he said you can't follow that. You just can't. Or somebody who's a screamer. That's why Bob Goldthwait immediately became a headliner. Not because he, he could was never. He could, that was one act that could never open a show. You, you could never follow, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, Bob Goldthwait. And the reason you couldn't do that was not because he was great, which he was, but not because he was great, but because he was so loud. Yeah. You know, so you didn't want to follow Bob Goldthwait. So he wound up being a headliner just by virtue of the fact that nobody wanted to follow him. Yeah, same with uh, Bob Rubin. Another another good example of that, you know. And it, it, it and 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 if you think about a lot of people who do become hits, and you go, why did they ever make it in this business? They made it because they were loud. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, uh, there are quite a few comedians. I mean, I sit around every day scratching my head over Amy Schumer. <laughs> well, Whitney Brown told me when I was a very new to comedy, he said, if you can't be funny, be loud. Yeah, 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 he's right. But anyway, so what I'm saying is you're the perfect opening act for, say, a Rob Schneider or a Dana Carvey who are not loud comics and don't do loud things. And so if they've got you there, you just kind of settle the house down, you know? Yeah. You give them some good laughs and they, they find you amiable. And uh, But it's not you don't have the kind of act that goes, follow that motherfucker. You know. No, the the uh, good opening act actually you're not supposed you're not supposed to kill. You're just you're pretty much supposed to just get the crowd focused. Yeah, um, I thought. I you know uh, somebody somebody said uh, what when you're interviewing people when you're interviewing comics why are you so good at interviewing comics because I think I was maybe the best interviewer ever of comics. Absolutely. Uh, because I I knew how to be a straight man when I needed to be. Mm-hmm. And I knew how to be funny when I needed to be. That was like when the comedian I had on wasn't being funny, you know. I said, but, you know, the one lesson I learned was from Steve Allen, who said once, never top the guest. You have the guest there to be funny and to do his job of being a guest. And if you're trying to top him all the time, and that's what a lot of these morning show hosts do. You know, they'll have uh, a Bobby Slayton in. And they'll try to top Bobby Slayton. They'll try to be funnier than he is. And that's not your job. Your job is to make this guy... And plus the fact, if I've got you on as a guest, it's because I'm fucking lazy. I don't want to do it myself. I'm bringing you in to do your thing so I can just sit back and enjoy it. And then when you leave, I've got the ratings and the salary. Yeah, if you make them look good, it makes you look good. Right. So I learned how to be, I think, a pretty good straight man, and the hardest part is being a straight man. Oh, I mean, the, the, best, the, yeah. the one thing that Goldthwaite always loved about me, uh, when he did love me, uh, which was a long time ago, was that <laughs> the first time he came in with this outrageous character, I never did what most morning show hosts would do. So, Bob, what do you really like? Instead, I played to the character. You played with the character, yeah. And that. Uh... And he loved that. After it was over, he looked at me. He said, you're the first guy who's never tried to, tried to break my, my wall. You know, you've got, you just went along with the character. He said, I appreciate that. And that's, you know, that's what your job is. But, you know, these morning show hosts don't know that. They think they're the funniest thing in the world. They got a morning zoo, and the word zoo is just funny in and of itself. So, you know. Well, that was a good, God, that was such a, uh, the first Goldthwait appearance on your show was, he just exploded after that. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he he was a phenomenon. He'd been ignored in Boston. Then he came out here, did your show, and it was like uh, suddenly he's filling, uh, you know, 4,000 seat rooms. Well, people always said to me, you know, thank you so much for making me a star because of your show. And I went, no, you made yourself the star. I simply gave you the the stage to do it on. I gave you an audience ready and willing to listen to you. Uh, And that's true. I mean, there were guys who came on my show who I just loved. I adored them. And they were terrible on the radio show. You know, they may, they were great on stage, but the, it, it didn't translate to radio. I'll give you a good example. Well, guy by the name of Jim Samuels. Uh-huh. I love Jim. Jim was a wonderful guy, and he was a funny comedian and all of that, but he just didn't work the show well. You yeah, know? some comics, you have, to do your show, you have to be in the moment, and some guys are just in their act. And by the way, he won the San Francisco comedy competition, so, you know, he's a pretty funny guy. But somehow on my show, it just didn't work. He didn't work yeah. well on radio. Uh, and, and I had to tell some comics that occasionally. Why don't you have me on more? Well, you, you don't work well on radio. You're a funny comic. you got a great act. you know. And, and they all wanted to be on the show because being on my show meant you would get an audience at your club. Right. And if you got an, a, an audience at the club, you could get more money. You know? So, uh, I mean, I imagine that you made a lot of money in those days just based on the fact that you were on my show regularly. Oh, if you're on your show, you could get people to come out that night to see. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was the good old days. 
Now, well, who was uh, who were the uh, like? Uh, I remember you told me there was a couple actors you had that were the worst interviews. Oh, uh, Wally Sean. Wally Sean, that was it. Yeah, I remember you t- your producer said, I've got Wally Sean next week. You said, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, what happened is I had Wally Sean on. Now, if, if people don't know who Wally Sean is, Princess Bride, you know, that's inconceivable. Uh, Annie, uh, Annie Hall, or was it Annie Hall? Or was it? No, no, it was, yeah, my, it was Annie my... Hall. She kept talking about this guy, and he had like a real black name. And then when he meets him, he's like Wally Shawn, this little wimpy guy. She says, yeah. you went with him? Yeah, he was, why did you do that? He was wonderful. <laughs> you know? But anyway, Wally Shawn, I want to have Wally Shawn on. Who, he's a great character actor. Inconceivable. Uh, and, and, <laughs> and so I say, yeah, absolutely, Wally Shawn. He comes in, and he is the most boring interview I could possibly imagine. I mean, I'm telling you, just really, really terrible. I mean, I not that there was anything wrong with him as a person, but he was just boring. Every answer, he'd give a slow answer. Well, I went downtown, and I and I'm wow. Fi- so I this goes on for about ten minutes, and finally, I just say, "Well, thank you very much, Wally, for being here." Now, you think that would be enough, right? You know, I'd done 10 minutes with him. I said goodbye to him, like maybe I have to get to something else. And he says to me, he looks oh, on the air. He says, I wasn't good enough. Wow. <laughs> so I kept him on for another 25 of the most boring minutes you've ever heard on radio. I said, oh, no, if you want to stay, stay. <laughs> I mean, and a sweet guy and a decent guy and, you know, all of that. And a great actor. I mean, I love him as a character actor. He's kind of like you. You know, he's got that <laughs> low-key thing going. And uh, uh, that, that maybe maybe the worst. Maybe the worst interview ever. Uh, or the, let me put it this way. The worst for me. Because, um, uh you know, I uh, it, it made me feel uncomfortable. I, I couldn't I couldn't keep the show going, you know, with him there. So eh, torturous, what, torturous, but nice guy. I don't want any, and very talented. So I don't want any of this to to diminish that fact. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, uh, well, some actors can't uh, unless they have to have someone to write the words for them, so they have no personality. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to remember anybody else that was terrible. There had to be another one. Well, it, it was happened years earlier, uh, and it was uh, Iggy Pop. Uh, I people say you want to have Iggy Pop on the show. I said, "Are you crazy?" This was the WMCA in New York. I said, "Absolutely, I want Iggy Pop on the show." So they brought him by, and he sat there for the whole hour and grunted his answers. So do you enjoy being in uh, in in the rock and roll? <gasps> he just grunted every answer. He didn't say anything. Just grunted. Now I have to admit this wasn't the worst interview ever because just the fact that he grunted for like 45 minutes <laughs> was in and of itself entertaining. You know, I go, so you you going to say anything? <laughs> uh, and he just grunted. So finally, at the end of the interview, I said, do you do anything but grunt? And he belched. That's funny. <laughs> and that was my interview with Iggy Pop. I wish I still wow. had it. I would play it sometime, and people would believe me that it was the most boring interview you could ever hear on radio. So, <laughs> and that, was the, uh, that was the other one I can remember. Otherwise, I don't remember people that were... Boring. I remember people that you know were were difficult to interview. Um, Steve Allen was a bad interview uh, because Steve Allen would take try to take over the interview. Uh, oh, okay. and and there's nothing you know when uh, uh, and I understand why. I mean, for years he was the host of a show where you're the guy who asked the questions. So when he would go on people's shows, he would just kind of assume that role. And uh, it makes it very difficult for someone who's trying to host a show 
And and at hosting a show, you're kind of like a, you know, you're you're a you're a ringmaster. And uh, you have to have control over everything around you. And, well, I didn't have control of everything around me when Steve Allen was on. And I talked to, remember there was, a, who are these people, the two people who had a talk show on KPIX like at 3 in the afternoon, uh, Ross and... Uh, Ross McGowan and, uh, I forget the girl's what's her name. name. She was, I liked her too, so I'm sorry, I can't remember her name right now. They said she, he was the worst guest they ever had. Because they were doing TV, and he came in and started calling the shots on how he wanted everything to be. The lighting, the the way the camera shots were, (laughs) all of that, you know. Oh, I'll tell you the worst interview ever. Oh, uh, uh, one that I, yeah, oh, hey, uh, how could I forget? So we're in L.A., okay, doing the show from uh, ABC Studios in L.A., a little road trip we took. And um, uh, a couple of days earlier, I've been watching, uh, I can't remember what show, I think, uh, uh, maybe maybe it was the, oh yeah, it was the Joan Rivers show. You remember when she had a show on Fox at night? Yeah. And she had on Mickey Rooney. And I never was a great fan of Joan in those days, but I had to say that I felt so sorry for her that night that I couldn't believe it. And it was because here comes Mickey Rooney and he literally hijacks the show, you know, <laughs> and he's talking, he's talking about products he's selling and his latest girlfriend and he just doesn't stop. Okay. And I went, I feel sorry for her. I, and I could look at the pain on her face during this interview. And I said, if the day ever comes that they offer me Mickey Rooney, remind me to say no. Okay. So now we're in L.A., and I'm sitting there in the studio doing my show. And because K- uh, KABC in Los Angeles has a lot of other shows there and people who come through as guests and so on, uh, you don't know who's going to show up. And I look in the control room, and who's standing there with Christy, who was then my producer, but Mickey Rooney. And I said to myself, I hope to hell she doesn't bring him in. <laughs> next thing next thing I know during a break, the door is opening up and Chrissy says, look who I've got here. I'd love to be on the show. Mickey Rooney. And I went, oh, my fucking God. <laughs> and so uh, there's Mickey Rooney uh, sitting himself down in front of me. And I start the interview and it's the same thing. He starts talking about the his pots and pans that he's selling, and he's talking about his girlfriend, his new 27-year-old girlfriend, uh, and blah, 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 blah. And then he goes into the riff that he even did on the on the uh, Joan Rivers show. Gee, you know, if I just could have gotten to Judy Garland soon enough, she'd be alive today. That routine. <laughs> And I'm sitting there, and it is just, I've lost all control of the interview. And I knew that would happen. That was, you know, uh, and Christy thought she was doing a wonderful thing. I got to hand her credit for that, but, you know, she wasn't. And I'm, Mickey Rooney is sitting, like, I'm at a table, and he's across from me. And then in the back, there's, like, this couch where all the guests uh, can sit before coming on or just anybody who's in the room can sit. And right over his shoulder is Bob Rubin. <laughs> and as he's doing, as this interview is going on, Bob knows exactly what's happening. And he starts giving me these weird looks like, oh, my <laughs> God. And, and I'm having a hard time not laughing at Bob's reactions over Mickey Rooney's shoulder to Mickey Rooney. It was singularly, uh, I, I'll even, that tops Wally Sean. As the worst interview I've ever had. <laughs> well, Dana Carvey did a sitcom with Mickey Rooney and has the funniest stories about. By the way, <laughs> is Mickey Rooney dead? I think he is. Does he know it? <laughs> he's still he's still trying to save Judy. <laughs> yeah, and and every time I ever heard an interview after that, it always came down to Judy Garland. I could have saved her life, but you know. 
She, I guess uh, one of the things Mickey Rooney, he Dana said he was just in the middle of nowhere. He'd go, I was number one in the world, 1938. Well, he was. <laughs> he was. He was the number for three years running, my friend. For three years running. He was the number, huge. Number one movie star in the world, folks. <laughs> number one in the world. <laughs> You know, by the time I got him, you know, he was he was nothing kind of like what I am now. So we would have gotten along. <laughs> I always remember The Roaring Twenties, a movie with uh, with uh, Jimmy Cagney dying on the steps of a church and a cop asking the woman. I know you folks have heard this before, but I, I'll say it again because it's my quote. Uh, uh, you know, what's his name? Blah, blah, blah. What does he do? And she looks up at the cop and goes, he used to be a big shot. And that's <laughs> wow. the end of the movie. Then the, the music yeah. swells and they pull back from the church with him cradled in her arms, dead. And uh, the end, you know, because all those Warner Brothers movies had great final lines. The movie could suck, but the final lines were always great. Yeah. You know, um, you know, is this the end of Rico? <laughs> Rico, <laughs> little Caesar. I, I ain't so tough. I ain't so tough. <laughs> was it, that was that Public Enemy? I think. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I, was that the last line? I ain't so. I ain't. So, I, ain't so, I don't know if it's the last line, but I, just, I ain't so tough. And then he falls flat forward, dead. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's the second time Jimmy Cagney's gotten <laughs> a good so last tough. line. <laughs> You know, so how anybody at, at, by the way, I was thinking this the other night when I was watching Cagney in a movie where he was dancing. And um, uh, I, um, oh yeah, it was like Bob Hope film uh, about Jimmy Walker. Uh, and he played George M. Cohan in this as well. But whenever I would see Jimmy Cagney dancing, I'm trying to figure out who at Warner Brothers said, Let's be a great <laughs> yeah. mobster. Uh, yeah, let's play him. Have him play the worst killer <laughs> known to mankind, and then the next picture, let's have him sing and dance. <laughs> I mean, I just, I, you know, in a world of stereotyping, it's just amazing. And he was a great dancer, by the way. You know, he wasn't mm -hmm. just a, a a minor hoofer. Yes, folks, they said hoofer, <laughs> not hooker. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you, you know, the line, that, the one line that lives after you, will live after you in the hearts of comics everywhere is just one word. And you know what that word is. What? You don't know? No. Butter. Butter. <laughs> the one word. <laughs> Every now and then, Bubs would come out with this, this thing, and he would go, butter. Say it. Say it. Butter. <laughs> yeah. Now, that means nothing to anybody, but it would lay comedians low. And the reason is, tell them where you got butter from. It was a, it was a punchline to a David Feldman joke. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a pretty so-so joke, but the way he delivered the punchline was so heavy-handed that we just... It was about a, you, it was about, about a fat guy. I don't know. About which... a fat guy who did a lot of cocaine. And yeah. the, what was his coke cut with? And they take this long pause. Butter. So that became a. Well, uh, butter with a question mark. Butter? Yeah. Yeah. So I just, uh, I tend to repeat things a lot anyway. So I just start saying butter like a thousand times a day. And then it caught on. And all the comics were saying it. I bet a and bunch to this of. this day, it, uh, it got, there was a. Somebody, oh, Dr. Gonzo posts butter a lot of times on Facebook, and then there'll be like 100 people going, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's, like, uh, uh, it's like you could sit around with a bunch of comics and just have them give punchlines. Yeah. And people would laugh. Uh, my, my favorite punchline is, and the same goes for your cat, too. It's about a mouse who beats the shit out of some guy and then looks back at him and goes, and that goes for your cat, too. Yeah. So, you know. 
I, but butter is your is your is, that's your uh, that's your <laughs> that's your catchphrase. I'm sorry, you're gonna have to live with it. For <laughs> the rest of it's your Feldman's life. joke. <laughs> no, but it's not Feldman's joke because you gave it a whole different life. <laughs> butter, <laughs> and you were just out of nowhere in a conversation with me on the air. Go butter. I, if I couldn't think of anything, uh, yeah, butter. I remember one night I was. Uh, I was talking to Feldman. I think I was just being crazy, and he was uh, he was getting really annoyed. Then Mike Guido walked in, and he said, "Oh, Mike, finally someone I can talk to that's normal." And Guido, Guido goes, "Butter." <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, those were the days. Those were the days. Good times. Uh, those were the days when things were fun and so on. But so you made you made a living this year. That's good. I made a living. I didn't lose money this year. So yeah. And uh, uh, do these guys pay you well? I hope they do. Otherwise, I'm going to have to call them. Oh, they pay me very well, yeah. Call them and tell them. Very generous. Yeah. Uh, Call them and tell them to go fuck themselves if they don't pay a lot of money for doing what you do. You know, but it's nice that, you know, these are are people who respect you, and they should. And if uh, nobody has ever seen Larry Bubbles Brown, uh, chances are you probably never will. So, anyway. You never will. (laughs) Hey, Bubs, uh, let's do this in a couple of weeks. I don't know what week because we have a holiday coming up. We have Christmas week, and we're off for Christmas week. But uh, okay. we'll talk to you at least in we'll two, talk soon. two or three weeks from right now. Well, uh, and uh, I'll wish you a pretty happy holidays and a pretty happy birthday. Okay, and thank you very much to Larry. All right. Bubbles. Brown. Yeah. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. Well, always love to talk to Butter. No, Larry Butters Brown. Yeah, Larry Bubbles Brown. Uh, Let me open a few things here. Oh, the stuff you hear every time you hear one of those clinks coming through, there's like a headline. Uh, that uh, that I didn't. Uh, that it says CNN is making a projection now. This is just a projection, uh, but and it's not uh, it's not final. And no, everybody don't cheer at the same time. CNN project, projection is that Democrat Doug Jones will win the U.S. Senate race in Alabama. Roy Moore loses after being accused of sexual abuse. So uh, and I in back of me I have a TV set. I won't say where it's set to, and I. Did everything I could to make it not read well on the screen here because I know those people at Facebook will probably go, oh, I see, we see a screen in the back. Let's uh, cut them off. And I, I don't want that to happen. So, um, In fact, uh, right now, uh, with uh, 91% of the precincts in, uh, Moore has a, a 572,380, but Jones has 585. 183. So it looks like Doug Jones is going to win tonight, which means the Democrats actually take back a Senate seat, and that's going to make things a little squeaky uh, as we go along here. So it's going to be, it's go, it's wonderful. It, it, let's just hope it uh, doesn't turn into a, a piece of crap here, you know. Anyway, let me open up the uh, the phone lines here, and. Uh, uh, they are open, as a matter of fact, and then we can talk to people. We talk to them using our thing called a citizens panel. That's more than one person at a time, and I'm sure all of you have some remembrances of this wonderful Alabama race. You know, I'd like to say the people of uh, Alabama have redeemed themselves, but it's such a squeaker that I bet Doug Jones, I'll bet, not Doug Jones, but that uh, uh, Roy Moore, I'll bet you, wants a recount. Okay, I just bet he's going to want to recount and is going to hold this thing up for as long as he possibly can. Because how can I not win? Well, you're now, uh, let's see here, 13,000 votes behind. And uh, is it still 13,000? Yeah, 13,000 votes behind. 91% of, uh, of the votes in. So, you know, I don't, I don't know what the full vote is there, but I don't know now that he can catch up. All right. Early in the night, it looked like Moore was going to take it. Uh, it was like uh, he had like 52% to 47% or something like that. And then it started narrowing and narrowing and narrowing. And now, well, we're, uh, things are better. 
Anyway, you know, the lines are open. Uh, I don't know how much longer I have to say that before somebody decides to call this program. Uh, but we'll just sit here waiting for people to call and uh, hope that they do. Our, uh, we have various ways to get a hold of us. The best way is by Skype. Uh, if you want to find out how to do that, go to gabnet.net right now on your browser. And over on the right-hand side of the page tells you all about Skype if you don't know about it. If you already have Skype, then our uh, ID to call is Gabnet Live. And you just do that. And uh, uh, it'd be best if you ask to be uh, permission to be, uh, uh, be made a contact because then that makes it easier for us to hook you in with everybody. I think I can still do it anyway. But I then have to send you a note saying, do you want to be a contact? It just gets a little worse. And, you know, so if you can do it, do it. Uh, as you notice, tonight I decided I would dress differently uh, than I have been dressing. The phones are open, aren't they? Yeah, the lines are open. Um, I, um, uh, I've dressed a little more, uh, how can we call it? Uh, well, I've got, a sh I've got a shirt on. Okay, I had a sweater earlier today, and I actually had a suit, uh, kind of a, a sports jacket, uh, because we went to court today, uh, in our in our big court case. Uh, we went to court today, and uh, we we get down there early, and then finally we go into the room where uh, we're supposed to have the system. Actually, what it is, it's uh, some, uh, it's it it's. It, how do they how do they put it wait a minute hold on a second i have i have it listed here uh I, in my calendar so that i can remember uh, but what what do they call it i want to know what they call it uh let me see here uh oh god do i have to do that okay um let me see here uh -huh. Oh, oral arguments is what it's called, oral arguments. And it's, it's an oral argument over a, a motion that uh, one of the people has put forward that they want the judge just to look at the evidence immediately and, and judge in their favor because there's no question here and so on. And so the oral arguments for that were happening. And it's really a waste of everybody's time, and it's really a stalling tactic. But nevertheless, uh, we, uh, uh, we went with this. Why isn't anybody calling for crying out loud? Am I on? No, I have the right line. I'm on. Uh, it, does it uh, look to people that I am on? Um, somebody uh, write a, a, a thing here and tell me why I can't, uh, why, why nobody's calling. This is ridiculous. Is there something wrong with my, uh, with my Skype tonight? Am I, am, I not, am I not showing up on Skype? Um, Wow. Anyway, we had to go to court for this thing, and uh, only to find out once we went all the way downtown, and our lawyer shows up, and all the other lawyers show up, uh, that the judge can't see us today because she's got a uh, criminal case. So it's been moved to the 12th of next month. This thing goes on and on and on and on. Wow. Hey, Phil, maybe it's just going to be you and me tonight for crying out loud, you know? Well, it's just such an exciting night because you got Judge Roy Moore, uh, who's going to be unemployed in the state of Alabama. <laughs> it kind of looks uh, like it, doesn't it? It's getting, the the difference is now, uh, b -b -b well, it's still, you know, it's still really close. It, it, you know. CNN yeah. called it for more. I mean, for, for Jones. Jones. Yeah, and I, I think everybody else is calling it for Jones, too. But it's still your 605,000, well, almost 606,000 to uh, 594,000. So there's about 12, maybe 12,000 difference there. And yeah, you can bet your life that Roy Moore is going to bellyache and become a crying little baby, right? Yeah, but the, uh, the thing is, is that this, the counties that are still yet to report uh, Jones has a large lead in those counties, and they're blue counties. Well, yeah, but they, 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 supposedly they don't have that large a population. Oh. And, and he's got to get 12,000 votes to even tie this thing up, and it doesn't look like he can do it. No, I don't think so. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think the uh, Republicans are kind of relieved that uh, they're not going to put this guy in the, uh, in the Senate. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, but I understand Jones has his own baggage. Well, Jones uh, may have his own baggage, but so far as I'm concerned, this kind of makes it a tighter thing in in the Senate. All that we have to do is on certain issues is just get one more, uh, two more votes over from the other side, and and we win we win an argument. You know. Yeah. Well, uh, they've been doing that anyway. <laughs> well, even without Jones. Well, no, but before we had you had Sessions in there. I mean, it was it was. We still had what was it forty? Is it forty nine or forty eight? So it was forty eight to fifty two. So now it's forty nine to fifty one. To fifty one. So uh, you know, and, and if at the very least, uh, this could play itself out in the in the next elections. Although this guy, I guess, only gets to stay in till next uh, November, right? And has to run all yeah. over again. Yeah. And, uh, you know, maybe the uh, Republicans will sport a little better candidate. Uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, well, Mike's waving his head no. Can you spell uh, Moore or Jones? Mike? Mike, can you hear us? Well, we can't hear you. Yeah. Okay, there we go. All Happy right. Hanukkah, you too. Thank you. It's not Hanukkah till. Oh, it is Hanukkah. It is Hanukkah. You yeah. know, every Hanukkah I forget to buy candles. Yeah. See, see, a little a Catholic boy remembers Hanukkah. <laughs> That's because they're looking for the Jews. No, but I, I always forget. I always forget. Give me money. Give me money, Phil. I have a very nice menorah, and yeah. and I I don't uh, don't don't forget to get the candles. Yeah, my ex has got the menorah. I've only been divorced 13 years, so yeah. uh, and I haven't made the effort to get By the one. way, before we get back to, to, to the Moore race, and let's see, how's it doing? 95% of the votes in. Um, it's, it's tightening up a little bit. Uh, yeah. I, uh, no, you know, no, no, it isn't well, tightening up. It's, it, there's a, it's actually spreading apart a little bit. Uh, Jones has got a little more than a 12,000 lead. Uh, to Moore's, uh, in fact, he's got a 13,000 lead now. So uh, it looks like it's all over for Moore, but you can bet with being this close, he's going to go and say, I want to recount. I want to, this, this is fraud. It was the uh, fake I news that it. did this to me. Yeah. You know, I doubt it. Well, he rode in on his horse and uh, he placed his vote. You know, the, it, um, Moore was a very poor candidate, and uh, you know. Uh, well, you know, he 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 was he was an Alabama candidate. Come on, Phil. Well, they both are, but yeah. uh, now the other one, Jones, from what I understand, when he was a prosecutor, he prosecuted some KKK guys. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, so. You know, maybe that state is is turning human. Uh, it could be. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, I uh, I saw who was it? Charles Barkley was down there today. Yeah, it's his home state, and he uh, he gave a speech, and he said in it, he said, you know, prove America wrong, make them think, know what we know that Alabamans are great. You know, don't give, don't 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 let the rest of the country look upon us as a bunch of fools. That's basically what he was saying. And I kind of thought that was a good way of putting it, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, it, I mean, let's face it. You're right. I mean, Roy Moore is maybe the worst possible idea for a candidate that's come along in years. His kind of philosophy went out with the KKK, you know? His right. philosophy went out with, with uh, I mean, th- that statement he made about, well, at least back in the Civil War, back before the Civil War, we had a sense of family, and we even took good care of the black people, too. Yeah. What kind of an idiot are you? And then his wife last night, did you hear what his wife said last night? Oh, yeah, in about a prepared, the Jew. In a she got it for an attorney. She says, <laughs> she says we, don't, we have nothing against the Jews. In fact, we have a Jew, and one of our attorneys is a Jew. And I'm thinking well, to myself, where can you find an attorney who isn't? Yeah, <laughs> you know? that's true. Or uh, a doctor. Yeah. Like I told you, uh, there was a, a joke about the three most dangerous people in the world. And one, and the most dangerous was a Jew with his attorney. Yeah, or which is another Jew, usually. Like my attorney for this case we've been going through is a Jew. Yeah. And, and he's good, too. He's really good. 
He's yeah. really terrific. But anyway, we and we went down there today, and nothing happened. We had to turn around and go home. Well, uh, I, uh, you know, uh, another Jew. I saw Bob Saget. Yeah, I get a chance to talk with him, mm-hmm. and uh, although I uh, mentioned to Yoni that uh, if she talked to him later, which I'm sure she would, mm-hmm. uh, tell her, tell him that you said hi. Yeah, and yeah. she said she would. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, his, uh, you know, he he was on for almost two hours. And yeah. he worked with the audience. He, uh, he he's a good stand-up. He was a classic, uh, you know, classic stand-up. In that, uh, yeah, he had he had a bunch of prepared stuff, but you know, he was able to just uh, jive with the people in the audience. Although the venue allowed me to take pictures, mm-hmm. but Saget said no pictures. So, uh, and uh, David said, if Saget sees you taking pictures, uh, you know they. They got to throw me out. So I didn't take any pictures. Hmm. Hmm. You know, there was no there was no um, uh, a- area, uh, you know, uh, between the stage and the crowd. Yeah. Uh, there was no pit. Uh, it, so I was way in the back. Yeah. Uh, and it was just too far. Well, you, too you, dark. you got mentioned in my um, um, by the way, it, it looks like it's over. Ninety eight percent. Jones is. Uh, uh, at 631,700, uh, yeah, there's a difference of 10,000 now. Yeah. 10,000 spread. He's not going to close in. He's not going to no, close with five percent to go. Right. What is that and, noise? And and the county, I don't know. And the counties that uh, he has uh, and have yet to fully report. Right. Right. So I mean, uh, it, pretty much the big cities, the big population areas have been counted for. So. You know, yeah. Uh, I guess that's going to be the uh, the uh, yeah. the whole ball of wax tonight. So, so who mentioned me? Oh, on one Facebook. Of, uh, Wait a minute. Let me see if I can find it here. One of my one of my uh, detractors. Oh no! Somebody posted a. Um, let me go to my page, my Facebook page, and yeah. somebody posted a picture of me doing one of my shows at the Fairmont Hotel. And there were a couple of comments and blah, 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 blah. Somebody asked me, uh, how about the young woman that attended you attended her high school yes. prom with? And uh, how's the young woman or whatever? And how about the young woman that you attended a high school prom with? Yeah, what happened? I started going with her for 11 years. Yeah. And she, she, she broke my heart. Anyway. The, what did you the, do? Pull a more? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but... Uh, here's here's what um, uh, Arthur Viken wrote. Where's Phil, the quintessential hanger-on, Zelig-like, Alex Groupie? He must have been laying carpet that night. Uh, <laughs> now, 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 now it's funny because this guy has probably never heard you on this show. Yeah. He remembers you from the radio show. No. Yes. Really? Yes. But I uh, I um, didn't do much with you when you went to Live 105 or The Quake. Uh, oh, well, then maybe he's maybe he knows you're on here. I don't know. That's a possibility. Yeah. Uh, yeah, most of the time uh, was at Camel. Yeah. And, uh, you know, then you didn't need me anymore as a producer because they actually paid for one. <laughs> so where is everybody tonight, you know? I mean, I've been thinking about quitting this thing, and this may just do it for me. Yeah? Yeah. You know, people... Well, you know, they could be watching the race. Well, there's nothing uh, to watch anymore. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Doug Jones, it says, apparent winner. Oh, uh, uh, talking about uh, the races, uh, yeah. you're... Friend Mario Batali. Yes, uh, I go to his restaurant uh, all the time. Yes, uh, well, wasn't he just accused a uh, uh, child it, molester? It, it, I, they pulled well, him first off of the all, show. First of chew? all, I put a thing up on uh, on uh, what do you call it on on Facebook? No, on where did I put up? Wait a minute, hold on a second. I, oh, I put a thing up on Twitter. Twitter. Uh, uh, that and, would have and, to mean that I look at that stuff. Yeah, and and I I wrote. Uh, uh, Mario Batali, restaurateur Mario Batali has been accused of uh, uh, improper sexual misconduct. 
And, uh, I, and then my last line was, well, there goes dinner. Yeah. So, you know. hey, well, maybe they'll lower the prices. They could. But they could. He uh, he did a today. He he didn't give an excuse. Yeah. He said, yes, I could be accused of any of those things. Uh, when I was younger, I was rambunctious and I didn't know, you know, I had a big sense of myself and I was just following the crowd and I was being, you know, that way. He said, but in years since I've learned that that's not proper behavior and I haven't done that in a long time. He said, but, you know, if they want to accuse me of that, yes, I'm guilty of that. And I thought yeah. that was a great answer. And so do we hold somebody accountable for something he did when he was in his 20s, say, and had no sense of things or maybe thought too much of himself? And now when he maybe has nobody's accused him of anything recent, you know. Yeah. Kind of like Judge Moore. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. When you get banned from a mall... You know, that's pretty severe. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's pretty the severe. Diss. Huh? That's the ultimate diss. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can't come into Macy's. <laughs> but, you know, Batali, Batali, Batali no said he's taking himself away from all his businesses and blah, 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 blah. He still owns those businesses. So whether yeah. he leaves them or not, he's going to make a very nice living. I mean, he has maybe the biggest food emporium in New York called Italy. And they've yeah. now built one in L.A. and they've got one in Chicago. And I think they even have one in like either Paris or London, one or the other. Yeah. And they, you go in there, it's all nothing but Italian food and everything you want to buy in Italian food, fresh ravioli. I mean, but it, this place is huge. It's yeah. you know, and there are about six restaurants in it. Mm -hmm. You know, and it makes uh, sixty million dollars a year. Did I read or something like that? You know, so. Uh -oh. And his rent is yeah. fifty nine and five. Yeah, yeah, right. Hello, Patrick Blazik. How are you this evening? I am dandy. Yeah. So, uh, what do you think about what's going on down in Alabama? Well, Fox called it a while ago that Jones won. So, um, I think it's good. It, it, it. You know, it's it better to choose morality over ideology. I, th I think so. I mean, I think that um, uh, I also think, you know, there's a totality of, of the kind of things that uh, that uh, Moore was kind of promoting, uh, which was not a very I don't can't believe the guy talks about Christian values and then doesn't live them, you know. Well, I, the other thing is maybe I mean, he was living them. <laughs> <laughs> but you say that as a Jew. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> The other thing that, you get, I mean, from my perspective on, on my side is that one vote isn't going to make a big deal going forward, at least until 2020. You know, unless the Democrats do something in 20, you know, this coming year where they uh, overtake everything. But that's up in the air. Who knows? So if the Republicans stay in control... Losing uh, the Republican vote in Alabama is really not consequential, you know. Yeah, um, and it it it's good because you don't have well, you don't, but we would have that stigma of more, you know. And I can't believe that the president actually endorsed that fucking idiot. You know, or maybe I can believe it. I, I don't know. I, well, I mean, this has got to be a blow to him because he takes these kind of things very personally. Of course, you know, he's going to do a tweet tomorrow saying the whole thing was fixed. It was the uh, it was the fake media that ganged up against him, blah, 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 blah. And uh, you know, that's coming tomorrow. Speech? Huh? Well, Are you writing a speech? I'm, no, I'm writing his tweets. <laughs> yeah. he, he back. Uh, strange though. So, I mean, uh, if I were him, I'd be pissed at my staff because my guess is if the staff that told him you got to back this horse because you got to play a team. Yeah. And he didn't, he was not for more way back in the primary. So. Right, right. We have to give him that. But he then got on the horse, so to speak. That, that's why I'd be pissed at my staff if, if they were the one 
pushing me to do it. I don't know? think anybody pushes uh, uh, Trump, Trump to do anything. anything. I think he can pretty well fuck things up on his own. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, you know, it's funny. Tomorrow morning, Trump's going to say, all right, who should I fire next? Who's on the chopping block next? No, Watch. I don't think he's going to fire anybody over this, but I, I think he's got enough you problems You never know, already. though, Tim. Because now he's being ganged up on again by uh, a woman who last week on this program I referred to uh, uh, with great respect as a cunt, Kirsten Gillibrand, because I didn't like what she did to uh, Al Franken. And it looks now that the reason why she did that to Al Franken is so she could get to Trump. Because then yesterday she came out, all with her hubris of having had a success with, uh, with Al Franken, uh, that she then said we should have an investigation into throwing the president out of office for his sexual misdeeds. Um, uh, and uh, then he wrote a tweet that he can't keep himself from tweeting in which he said something to the effect that Kirsten Gillibrand, uh, uh, when she was running for office, begged me for money and indicated and indicated she would do anything to get it. Right. Thereby intimating that she maybe give him a blowjob if he gave him money. I'd let her. Well, yeah. Well, she, I don't know. She, she, uh, she's not that good either. Anyway, uh, but let's not talk about uh, a woman who can ruin my career at a moment's notice. Uh, of course, I did call her a cunt. So, you know, I mean. I mean, how much worse does it get than that? But, but, you know, so today I'm cheering her on because, you know, the president said this stuff about her. But I can't cheer her on completely because I think that what she did last week was in anticipation of what she was going to do to Trump so that she nah. wouldn't then. No. So that and, and also what was happening down. So they they were, you know, it was going on down in Alabama. I mean, I think Franken was sacrificed for that. So that. Oh, she uh, climbed. She climbed on the uh, three broads that were uh, coming down against Trump. Uh, and uh, have been three? Being, there are 19 of them, Phil. I know, but there's three of them that they interviewed on TV yesterday. On Megyn Kelly's show. Was that? No, no I, it was, uh, it was I think it was Kelly's, yes. it was Megyn Kelly's show. Oh, okay, because I saw three of them on, I thought Megyn it was Megyn Kelly's show. All right. And uh, <laughs> there was uh, the old one. Uh, and, and the other two, and, uh, you know, they really couldn't accuse him of much other than walking into a room with contestants, uh, sitting next to a woman on a plane and a woman got creeped out. Uh, and, uh, the other one, uh, he kissed on the uh, cheek and, uh, maybe she didn't uh, refute his kisses uh, and, uh, uh, he planted one on the lips. Now that, that sounds like a real abusive piece of shit to me, doesn't it? You know, uh, you know, he was just a little avarice and, uh, little avarice, and, and, avarice is when you want a lot of money. Well, no, <laughs> isn't it also, huh? You mean amorous, amorous, amorous. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, uh, Hey, so these three gals are, uh, piling on, and mm -hmm. I think Kristen Gillibrand just did the same thing. Kirk, she piled Kirk, up Kirsten, the, you know, Kirsten, those three. Kirsten Gillibrand. Whatever. Well, no, but I mean, you know, you got to call her by her right name, which is uh, either Kirsten Gillibrand or cunt. I think that, <laughs> now, you see, I mean, so I, I had a, a negative feeling about her from the Franken thing. And then today I found that at least I had to somewhat uh, uh, champion her for her going after Trump. But it, now, you're, now you're going in the right direction. But there are a lot of people who said they believe that the whole, uh, uh, you know, the trouble with uh, uh, Al Franken was that he got, this whole thing came down on him at the wrong time. Because they, th this was going to be a sacrificial lamb that the Democrats were going to put up and out there so they could then complain about Trump. They could complain about more, and nobody could come back to the Democratic Party and say, but you've got these couple of people in your, in your, in your camp, and you're not doing anything about them. Uh, well, and, and so, nothing's uh, going to happen with Franken, and nothing's going to happen with Trump. And, uh, what do you mean and nothing's going to happen with Franken? He's out of the Senate. Not uh, yet. Yeah, he hasn't. Uh, he hasn't tendered his resignation. Well, yes, he Patrick. said he intended to. Patrick. Yeah, I think the strategy there was on his part 
mm-hmm. whether Roy Moore would have won, he would not resign because at that point he would probably dig his heels in and say what Roy Moore had been accused of is worse than what I have been accused of. And now I'm not going to be resigning. We're going to go to the ethics committee or whatever it is. And then Ms. Uh, Kirsten would be pissed because even though she led the charge to get him out, he did leave that window open, like like Phil just said, that he didn't say when. And in fact... Well, he said he, uh, by the first of the year. Somebody from CNN really? asked him uh, a specific date, and he didn't answer. Hey, two uh, if I were him, if, if, if I were in, him, I would I would come out and say I thought about it, and I've listened to people around me, and a lot of people are very mad that I quit, that I should stand my ground and prove my you know my innocence in all of this, and so therefore I've decided I'm going to go through the process. Right. If it does, if if and I find that the slowness of that process, or that process, makes me weaker as a senator. For my people, well, then I will back off, like I've said, because I don't want it to affect the people of Minnesota. But in the meantime, I will pursue it. What? Six weeks in Washington time, uh, people have a very short memory. Mm -hmm. Six weeks from now, nobody will remember Franken said a thing or groped anybody or kissed anybody. Uh, and it will just be business as usual. Oh, by the way, in case anybody's listening and was bothered by the comments I made earlier, well, to begin with, you'll probably defriend me on Facebook, but that always happens. Uh, but uh, I also call guys cunts, okay? Uh, it's a term I, uh, the British use it for oh, yeah. anybody, you know. Uh, I've heard it used more in Britain to describe a guy than a woman, okay? Yeah. So therefore, I find it a word that I say because it is terribly objectionable, and I want it to be taken that way. Okay. Well, you, you know, you should use a British accent when you do that. Yeah. Well, I, so, I asked Bob Geldof. Yeah. I asked Bob Geldof on my uh, Geldof on my show <clears throat> on Sirius mm-hmm. about the word cunt, and I said, you know, Bob, uh, what about the word? You know, cunt. And uh, he said, oh, yeah, we, we guys call each other cunts all the time. It's not it's didn't, not a word. Didn't that he we... say, uh, uh, call me Mr. Geldof? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what happened was uh, he did a promo for me, which I wish I could find somewhere. I in, think I had that interview on tape. Alex, in, 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 in which he says, um, uh, Al, this is uh, Bob Geldof. And Alex, you're a real cunt. <laughs> <laughs> So if you're if you're bothered by that, don't be bothered by it, or be bothered. If you're bothered by it, really be bothered by it, because you deserve to be bothered by it. Okay. Yes, Patrick. Uh, Doug Jones just uh, wished all of his Jewish friends a happy Hanukkah. Did he really? Oh, nice. <laughs> At Passover. Passover. <laughs> if he wished him a happy ha- huh? It's Hanukkah. Oh, Hanukkah. It's Excuse a- me. It is Hanukkah. See, that's how bad a Jew I am. It yeah. is Hanukkah. Bad Jew. Yeah. Uh, but he looks happy. I just see him on the screen over here. He's uh, the job. And uh, he, yeah. Oh, I'm, I want to hear what Roy Moore it's has another, to say. It's another Democrat on the government dole. Yeah. yeah but the other guy's creepy, though. Come on. Boys, you're all kids. And they're both. Look, you look I, know, I know Phil can't possibly <laughs> like Roy Moore. I mean, I you know, I, I, I know Phil well enough that he that can't bother him that much really he likes more yeah. oh yeah i i would like to see 60 65 republicans in the senate i would never uh, want to see that yeah no, i democracy. would never want to see that and i'd like us to get back to the, doing away with the simple majority which goes out by the way at the first of the year so that we can have some real fights over things and have oh, you to win want people a fili- over. filibuster you know i i also think that you should change the name of the senate to appease Democrats and call it the Politburo. Did you hear anybody oh. laugh here at that? Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Your uh, audience. Uh, oh, they're they're laughing. Audience, if you're laughing, uh, send across <laughs> some, send across some uh, some uh, smiley faces for Phil if you laughed at that joke. All right, Alex. I bet you Renee's happy right now. The guy's losing. Well, no, well, he I, he lost. Oh, Renee's, no, I, uh, happy. Renee's oh. happy. I'm happy. 
Yeah, I know. I know. A lot of people. I know she really is happy. Is happy. Huh? I think the country is happy. It's a good sign. Anyway. That, uh, you know, this this guy is, uh, and, and it's not so much that he was accused of being a child molester or anything, so, right. anything like that. It's, uh, you know, his, you're right, he's from another century. It's creepy. I mean, I never vote for this guy. There's, yeah, a, certain, yeah, there's a certain creep factor there that, that you can't deny. Is it just like their ass backwards? Like, yeah, it's not that bad. What? It's like, come on, it's crazy. So, uh, oh, Patrick, did you hurt your hand? Oh, what happened? I hurt my hand. Your well, finger. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. Where I'm bleeding? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I ripped the hand. Oh. oh. What happened? I actually burned my finger. Um, I, I was um, actually uh, getting some Christmas stuff ready, and uh, I must have cut it on... Um, uh, some corrugated cardboard. Yeah. One, so I had to snip off what was left of it, and then Ooh. been bleeding. So oh, shit. if I die on the show, um, I don't know. Say something nice about. Well, me. I die on this show every <laughs> night. And nobody <laughs> says anything nice about me. So why should say it about you? <laughs> hey, I uh, I decided to put off my. Uh, my uh, little operation. What? Again? Well, you, you know, it's a weak way. And what do you want? Do you want the cancer to really grab hold and metastasize into the rest of your body and then say, now I'll do something about it? I mean, come on. He's not it's listening to you, Alex. It's not no. like, See, I was, it's get, I was getting ready to call you at place. home and... And 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 find out how you're doing, and to, you know, send flowers and do all of that, you know. It's and, in February. And you're moving into <laughs> February. You know what's well, going to happen? Uh, They're going to keep moving up my court dates. At the same yeah. time, they move up your your operation, I, so that you know. Well, they arbitrarily gave me the 19th, and I really tried to uh, to meet it. It's not going to happen. Well, it's a holiday uh, season. What what a f fucking time to... Oh, you know, December 19th? Yeah, year? I know it's a holiday season, but I've got so much... You know, I've got a plane trip in January. I've got to go to Dallas. And, you know, sitting on a plane for five or six hours after you have your prostate ripped out isn't going to be that comfortable. Well, you should ask the doctors about that to begin with. Okay. Will you be able to travel? You know, by, I would well, imagine... He, he, he said yeah, in a month, yeah. But I mean, it's just at that time, and so you'd uh, rather that, go to a fucking rug convention, yeah, and risk the possibility of terminal cancer, yeah, <laughs> so that you can go to a rug convention. Yeah, How yeah, fucked yeah. is that? <laughs> it's attention grabbing. I would imagine they're all the same, just a different city, no? Huh? Yeah. Well, you know. Uh, they are all the same. These uh, conventions, it's they're all the same, and I've been going to them since 1995. I mean, it's probably fun, right? You probably talk to And what kind of hookers do you get at a uh, rug convention? Well, um, we Plus get the old ones, ladies and Javada cake. We get the ones that the Mormons don't want. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. And they don't shave. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> hey, uh, another bombing in New York. Right. Did we didn't talk about that yet? Did we? Yeah, this guy was a real oh, fuck yeah. up. <laughs> he was a he real fuck a up. Ball, yeah, I think he bought all his parts at Home Depot. Or something like that. <laughs> Except for the pipe, which he got off a construction site. Yeah, yeah. But he uh, had this thing, and he uh, it went off, and it well kind of went off. It made a lot of smoke, and he got burned. And he's yeah. going to be in prison for the rest of his life. So I hope he's happy. Well, his family says he's not being treated right. But you know what? When you strap a bomb to your stomach, you're not going to be treated it. right. Not in the subway in New York City. I'm sorry. Even New York's gotten very wimpy over the years here. We're not the same tough fuck you town that we used to be. But still, you try to bomb people in the subway, you're going to have everybody after you, including the rats, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, he'll he'll probably get off. No, he you won't. Know. What? Are you kidding me? He's going to jail. 170 years plus uh, life imprisonment. Yeah. Without parole. Who who says that? 170. 
No, it, it, That's what he's going to get. Huh. Why is he going to get 170 years plus life? Isn't 170 <laughs> years life? Is he going to live to 30 years? Yeah. It depends. Like uh, if you're Moses, you know, you, it's not that. It's not that. Well, what do you think about all these charges against Trump with uh, the sexual thing that Gillibrand is bringing up and saying that he should be removed from office because of his sexual improprieties? Well, Hang him. You know, he was either single or uh, on was, the prowl. He, yeah, uh, hang him. How are you going to excuse know, the behavior? I want to hear. I want to hear this. Go I, ahead. I, I excuse oh, the guy. Yeah. This is the way I things were him. at the time. He's not doing it now. He can't do it now. He probably can't even get it up now. Yeah. Well, uh, well oh, you know why? Because he's drinking 12 Diet Cokes a day. Yeah, is that true? They say he drinks like a case of soda a day. Yeah. That's a lot of soda. Hope he's he's go, go forget now. He's cheeseburgers and whatever else Well, the quote, Larry Bubbles Brown, if he was doing Coke, what's he cutting it with? Butter? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. No. Well, you know, I mean, uh, I think that um, I, so I have to cheer on Kirsten Gillibrand. You know, I've got a cunt on this shoulder and an angel on this one. And they both look like Kirsten Gillibrand. And, and there's a there's a harsh quality to her tenure as senator in the state of New York that puts her on this shoulder. And then there's part of her that puts her on this shoulder like when she goes after Trump. Now she's on the right track. What she did with Franken, I think, was abominable. And and that seat may go eventually to a to a Republican. Then we're really screwed. Oh, no. Yes, uh, Patrick. Um with with this shit with Trump, there there's no way to defend it, but the the question that I have is where was all of this when he was running and I mean you know they had 16 or 17 fucking uh, Republicans running and that was barely even scratched except by Megyn Kelly at the one debate and then it never really surfaced again and now he's been in office over a year and or just about a year, I should say, and it hasn't been really brought up until now. What are they doing? I, I don't think so, Patrick. I think during his uh, uh, during the uh, I don't know if it was during the primaries uh, 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 during, but right after he uh, I think was nominated, a, a lot of people came out and uh, uh, complained. But then. It, it was never really brought up during all of the debates. Megyn Kelly, the only one that really confronted him with it, and then it kind of went away. I mean, even when he was debating Hillary, uh, Hillary never brought it up that I remember, or if she did, it was very mild. Plus of uh, Bill Clinton. You know, she, uh, she was kind of hamstrung. Uh, 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 you know, because she allowed Bill Clinton to stay in the, uh, you know, married to her rather than uh, dump him for his improprieties. And uh, so she was kind of stuck uh, well, saying look, nothing. Look, you know something? I, I think you could look at it another way. Uh, in that you could appreciate the Clintons by saying that in spite of this great adversity, they found a way to stay together. They found a way to try and resolve the situation and yeah, keep their family in help. one piece. All right, let's just say that that's an attribute, okay, rather than a negative. And that it's, it's the first family of the United States saying, if you've got problems at home, you know, you too can solve them. That You don't just suddenly get divorced because there's an adversarial situation. Sure, you get two houses in Chappaqua. <laughs> And one lives in one, the other lives in the other, and they better not cross. <laughs> or you get, oh, yeah, or you, you get like Ted Kennedy and get one car in Chappaquiddick. Thank you. I'll be here all night. Bottom. Um, I was uh, it, it, you know, Everybody forgot that one. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, Did he go to bed or something? You know, nobody, nobody when he died said, ah, and there's Ted Kennedy, he died today. Remember when he got the, the Chappaquiddick situation? Remember that? 
You know, yeah. Like, yeah. Where uh, he lost uh, any possible bit at being a president in the future because he said, I panicked. He was a strong swimmer. He and Mary Jo Kopechny was not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's got to be a joke there, and I'm not going to make it. Were there any, were there any Mary Jo Kopechny jokes? I, I don't think so. Like, you know. What sits in the back seat of the car and goes glub glub glub? I don't know. There, it's got to be a joke there somewhere. Yeah, probably. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, too early. Yeah. <laughs> it's only been what 35, 40 years. Yeah, something like that. Oh boy, that was a, that was quite a deal. But anyway, um, but uh, I just I just think it's you know we're we're we got problems. We are in a deep doo doo in this country. Uh, we are. How can I put it? We're in deep doo doo. That's it. Well, Case maybe closed. not. You know, if uh, if a red state like Alabama uh, can, uh, and it, and it wasn't that narrow. Just remember, when Franken won, it was only by three hundred and some odd votes. Yes. Uh, that, well, that yeah, that was three hundred and twenty-five votes or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and, and it was it was uh, I added I added Bree. Why is it still bleeping? And going crazy here. Come on, Bree. I see you there. Are you there, Bree? Are you there? Are you there? I don't think he's there. Yeah, no, I don't think he's there. No. Uh, okay, well, hopefully he will try again. Oh, there he is again. Are you there, Bree? Yeah, I'm here, Alex. I have. It's a funny thing with my iPad. I can never uh, just call into you. I have to call in. Then it uh, it uh, freezes, and then it shows join ongoing call, and then I could do that with audio, and I have to wait a little bit, and I might be able to give you a video. We'll see. Yeah, but anyway, uh, you did you hear already what happened with Roy Moore in uh, in Alabama? Yeah, yeah. listening yeah. in uh, to the first hour. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something else. Well, uh, you know, I, uh, however, don't 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 praise Alabama yet because it was by such a small margin that, you know, a guy like Roy Moore should have been soundly defeated, you know? And uh, so yeah. that proves that, uh, you know, there's some people there that like the fact that you can have sex with a 14 year old. Works for me. <laughs> uh, does it really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. Sure. You know, listen, uh, I, I, it, 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 it was, it was bad enough when I had an 18 year old girlfriend who every time a national geographic special was on, she looked at the screen and went, look, kitties, you know, uh, <laughs> Hey, you know, uh, there's, there's a lot of people in this country. They go to places like Thailand and the Philippines and, uh, they, they seem to prey on uh, boys and girls, uh, that are, and, and so does that make it right? No. Well, what do you, what but, do you, then what are you saying? Why would you even bring it up? Now you've told every pervert who yeah, listens to this right program there. where to go to get laid. <laughs> well, it's just that uh, there is a proclivity for a lot of people to do those kinds of things. Let me and, just say this. Uh, let me just say this to the people out there who might be considering it. There is a downside to having sex in Thailand, and that's having sex in Thailand. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, well... Uh, it's just that, you know, all over the world, there are people that prey on, on, on young uh, men and women. Uh, even in, uh, in India and Pakistan, they're saying that they're, uh, they're getting married at uh, 9 and 12 years old, uh, you know, because the parents are they're, selling. They're, they're more mature there than they are in this country. What, what is it, the curry? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Sir Patrick. Well, what about Jerry Lee Lewis? I mean... Yes. Uh, I, I, I heard somebody talking about him today. I don't remember if it was on television or the radio, where they said that when he married his cousin, yeah. that pretty much put the kibosh on him becoming as big as Elvis because he very well could have catapulted it as, as high as Elvis did. Um, because of his musical talent, and people did not, outside of that southern community where he was born and raised, could not understand that whole uh, men mentality of 
marrying not only that young, but marrying a cousin. Yeah. I mean, and I, I guess I never really thought about that, that he could have been as big as Elvis. And I, I think that that's probably kind of true. Yeah. Don't, 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 don't do, don't do that. Don't put that on the screen. Don't put that on the screen, uh, 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 Bree, okay. because we could get into some kind of trouble for that. I don't, you know, um, uh, because it, 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 uh, Facebook gets so ridiculous about not by copyright infringement that if we were to show a TV screen of any sort, you know, I had to take this one in back of me and blur it out, and uh, so that it wouldn't uh, wouldn't show up. So. But I would love to see you. You know, whenever I do that, uh, the audio starts breaking up. Well, try it and let's see if the audio breaks up. <coughs> try it and we'll see. Because it, so, sometimes it has to do with bandwidth, but no, we, there we but go. But we can talk about what's going. going. No, I know it just doesn't kick in. Yeah. We can talk yeah, about something with my iPad is strange. Well, iPads are not the strongest way to to do this. If you if you have a PC or you have a, a you know, Mac. I have a, I had a laptop in my office, but last week, Alex, or maybe two weeks ago, I had an old phone get stolen from my office. So I took everything of value back home, and I I just bring in the things that I need now. Oh, so you're in the like, you're in the office right now. Yeah, I'm in the office. Yeah, he's in Dubai, if by somebody, the way, ladies and gentlemen. I would say Dubai, Dubai, but then nobody would know what we were saying. If, if somebody in Dubai gets caught stealing, do they do the same thing to them like they do in Saudi Arabia, cut, cut off their arm? No. No? No, that, that uh, by the way, that in Saudi, that does not happen. A lot of people, it has to be uh, three times, and they have to be uh, sort of known for that and, and given warnings. And then the, the people that they steal from can say, can sort of uh, wipe it out. Like if a guy steals an apple from my cart, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can just say, no, that it's fine. You know, you don't have to do that. But if it's like a major thing and it's three times, then I think. But uh, they're changing over there rapidly. Do you know how much yeah. they're changing? Did you just see the late, most recent change? Yeah, of, yeah. of course. They're allowing, <laughs> but, no, they're allowing movie theaters. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which actually they already had, but yeah, they're going to allow more of them. And uh, women to drive, and uh, uh, are they relaxing the head head garments? I don't know about that. Uh, I haven't heard anything about that yet. But, you know, actually, if you looked over here, uh, those aren't a bad idea, because otherwise you're going to get uh, probably skin cancer, because the, the sun is very powerful. And uh, you, you might want to cover up because you're you're definitely going to have some problems with your skin if you don't. So yeah. uh, that I, <laughs> I know it yeah. seems a little strange. Well, we're also not but, talking about the, uh, you know wearing burqas necessarily in Saudi Arabia. I think you're allowed to wear a hijab and that that yeah. s solves the problem, you know, which is Correct. a very nice scarf that, you know, it doesn't look terrible. Uh, I think uh, it makes women look uh, attractive still. You know, I burka burka is the big problem. Is you just get a hot for somebody's ankle, you know. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but yes, you had yeah. your hand up, Patrick. Yeah, yeah I, I, I was going to ask about uh, burka versus hijab. And yeah, <clears throat> burka is more stringent and more found in some places like you know. Uh, oh, there you go. See, is it working? Yeah, I hope. yeah it's working. It's working fine. That's okay. th that, is that your desk at work? Yeah. In fact, it looks so good that it doesn't even look like you're in uh, in Dubai. You know, it looks like wow. you're, a really clear picture. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's on an iPad. Yeah. Wow. That's a, the, the clearest picture we've had on you. Uh, huh. really. Go figure. Yeah. Go yeah. figure. I'm sure it'll screw up soon. <laughs> now, what, what what are you doing over there? You're teaching, right? Yeah. 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 And what do you teach? What is your main uh, you know, just uh, whatever they need you to teach. Whatever they need you to teach. Huh? Whatever they need you to teach. Now it's now that your audio is breaking up. I'm sorry. See, I got to go back to. Okay, uh, we understand. I can't hear you guys. But yours, well, your audio is not breaking up. Your audio is not. Your audio uh, wasn't breaking up. 
you were yeah you're that's strange flipped. that's really odd yeah all right i'll bring my laptop in tomorrow yeah bring the laptop yeah. in then you'll probably be just fine with the whole thing yeah 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 my ipad uh i only have the 16 gigabyte and i download a lot of newspapers so whenever more newspapers are on it and i don't have a lot of storage that's when it acts up well you know that may i don't know that storage would be a factor but it does become a factor with pcs for instance in that if you um have don't have no I'm trying to think of memory or storage uh, no it's memory if you don't have enough memory your 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 machine oh, has to store stuff on the hard drive in order to you know they cache it there oh uh, yeah yeah but so far as hard drive i don't think that really depends well of course you've got memory that 16 gigabytes is well it's storage memory it's not operating yeah. memory uh, yeah i don't know i don't know if that's yeah. the problem or it's just the fact that the ipad isn't meant to do heavy lifting you know yeah is it an older one? No, this is like the iPad Air 2. It's like really... Oh. Well, I well, have a the... pretty good processor. Yeah, let me try it again. It, as I said, uh, it just... Good picture. I, yeah. Yeah, it's there? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, your audio's clear. Uh, I've been uh, watching, Alex, the um, Mike Pence is supposedly coming to the Middle East, but there are a lot of people who don't want to meet with him now and uh you know it's really odd because uh it just seems like a it's a it's a slow build but I, I, what trump has essentially done is taken the u.s out of the middle east process so i think in a way this might be good uh because now everybody is just like, like the u.s is not part of that they're just they're on the side of israel and now we got that clear, and we think that's this is this is them thinking. We think that's the way it was anyway. So now they're just declaring what we already knew. In other words, yeah, we, Therefore, were, we were justifying their fears. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, so others are stepping in. Um, I don't know the degree to which they'll be able to do so, but uh, but at least now it's pretty clear um, that the U.S. you know is definitively backing Israel, and that's how it is so uh we'll have to see how that goes but i know a lot of people over here are just like don't meant if you mention uh israel palestine don't mention us they have nothing to do with it they're they're already uh declared for israel strong and and you know and some people say you know uh that's where they were anyway so so be it well that's what trump said he would be uh, I don't know that they were that way under Obama. No, uh, under Obama, I think Obama was more of trying to mediate the whole thing rather than take sides. Uh, and I think that's where we've got to position ourselves. I don't think we can position ourselves on one side or the other and expect that we can become a mediator or that we can solve that problem. How did that it work? Maybe too late. Oh, now it's too late. Yeah. Of course, because he's caused all this damage. I know. Well, right. And he kind of, as I told you, Trump kind of lives in the 80s and 90s. Um, I think that, you know, that was a position that Congress adopted in what, 1990 something. Yeah. So it was many, many years ago. And I think Obama was sort of realizing that we were moving to a different position. Um, but Trump just came in and he's like, well, you know, oh, what? remember that from the and then he had, you know, his a group uh, that supports him. Right. And he was able to say, okay, let's bring that one back up. And it's true after all. Yeah. And uh, so, but it's, yeah, uh, on that issue, uh, it's a, it's a no, it's a non-starter. Right. Uh, the U.S. simply is, it, and I don't know who, who Pence is going to meet with when he comes over here. Uh, but uh, most people, I mean, the press seems to show. What you're saying is nobody's going to, nobody's going to meet him at the airport. When you say over there, do you mean Dubai or do you mean no, other? No, over here in the Middle East. Well, I think the Saudis will receive him. Uh, I know. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I no, just, they, they weren't that I happy. They weren't that, that happy with Trump. They just knew how to play him. 
You oh, know, they, they, we'll made, they made sure they we'll had see. a lot of welcome Donald Trump signs I, from the airport and that made uh, Donald Trump happy. But uh, according to what I heard that after they left, uh, the you know, the Saudis had no great love for Donald. No, Trump. that new prince uh, that th- uh, that threw everybody in jail. Uh, yes, but he's also uh, the yeah. one that he's also the one that's liberating women, their ability to drive uh, is yeah. bringing in the movie theaters, realizing that maybe uh, maybe he has to create a. Uh, Saudi Arabia for the future and to get into 20th, 20, 21st century. Uh, he's uh, moving more pro Western. Well, no, he's not. It's not pro Western. It's pro modern. Would you agree with yeah. me on that? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, you're right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely, you are right. What did you say, Patrick? It looked like Roy Moore taking the stage. Oh, is he really? I didn't. Um, I, I, I don't have it on, so I, I won't play it. But. Uh, Patrick, give us a reenactment. Yeah, Patrick, what's he saying? <laughs> well, uh, mm, oh, it isn't him. It, it's some spokesperson for him first. So oh, it's his Jewish attorney? His Jewish attorney? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. To go out there and tell everybody, see, he's not a bigot. Yeah. Right. Well, I think uh, I, I, you know what's going to happen. You know Roy Moore is going to protest this, saying it's too close. I want to recount. I don't think so. It's not that close. He, listen, a guy, a guy 300 who, something votes for uh, Frank, and that was close. Oh, that thing went on forever. Right. You know, and, oh, it, was, yeah, and was, it, it was that close. Some the hanging second, Chad for uh, for no, this, Bush this, this, that was close. second the second time he won Franken won he won by a nice majority but that first time was a real squeaker he didn't know what nobody knew who the who the uh, senator was going to be from Minnesota for for what three months four I months think it took like almost that. a year before they seated him didn't it? I don't yeah. think it was that much no it was, it, I think at the most it was six months oh. yeah it, it was it wasn't that long but yeah it, it was quite a wait. Yeah. Forgot about that. Yeah. So, I mean, Roy Moore could protest it and probably hold up the seating of Doug Moore in the Senate while he protests it. Or maybe Doug Moore goes there anyway, you know, and they, he can protest it all he wants to. But he's, I, I, I don't even have to watch Roy Moore's speech tonight. I'll tell you that he says it's the, uh, the uh, fake news that, uh, that hurt me. You know, the fact that he didn't, you know, this guy didn't go out and campaign. He sat home for the last couple of weeks. He went to Philadelphia. The only only interview we did was with a 12-year-old girl. Now, that's good positioning, you know. Didn't he go to Philadelphia uh, while uh, Jones was holding all sorts of rallies this weekend? Who went to Philadelphia? Uh, Roy Moore. I don't think so, no. Uh, I thought I read that he went to Philadelphia. No, I don't know. You read things that nobody else reads. Uh, yeah, really? I mean, where where would that one come from? Oh, you probably read The Onion like it's the real thing. Yeah, well, I like to peel it. Yeah. Um, fact, well, God, God is always in control, so I guess God didn't like Moore. I, well, it w- would Moore admit to that, that God didn't like him? That's why he didn't win. Well, he just said uh, God didn't control, so, I mean. Um, he said something. I heard a quote where he said, uh, if you don't think I have the right character, don't vote for me. Did you hear that one? No. Oh. No. Yeah, he, he had, there was a quote. He, I heard his voice say it yeah. on a radio yeah. report. He said, if you don't believe in my character, don't vote for me. That may have had an impact on some voters. <laughs> Uh, I, I I don't think so. I, I think that whoever was going to vote for him voted for him, uh, and that uh, I don't think that there was a lot of people that were swayed one way or another down there. Oh, I think there were a lot of people that were swayed. I think there were people down there uh, that that this said to themselves, you know, I I don't want a Democrat in, but on the other hand, I don't want Roy Moore to be in there either. Some of them voted independent. Yes, uh, uh, Patrick. He did not concede. No? What? No. He, He's waiting for Jesus to tell me you're wrong. He didn't concede. Oh, he said, he said that, that was, as I was reading on the uh, uh, mute, it, it was saying that um, 
you know, God is in control. We're, we're going to let this process play out. The Secretary of State something, I, I missed part of it. See, I'm right. He's going he's gonna to have him on a recount. Then he, then he quoted... Oh, that's right. Oh, guys, got, how could we forget the illegal immigrants? The illegal <laughs> immigrants <laughs> voted. God that's voted. it. He's God like, has okay, now I understand. We'll get to the bottom of this. Roy Moore won. He there were won. three million voters. He quoted in there. Psalms, and then it was something about um, how God put one of the prophets or something. Oh, feet, this guy's crazy. Feet in clay, but then they were able to, uh, you, you know, anyway, he didn't concede. And he said, we're not going to make people wait here any later. So everybody go home and uh, uh. that'll so, I, I think the official the official word is in. It doesn't matter what he does. A Drudge Report headline: Dems oh. win Alabama White House. Yeah. <clears throat> Why not? I think we got to get a count. Because he endorsed them. He's pulling a Hillary Clinton. Where remember she didn't uh, she didn't get in until what later later that night or would she didn't even come down that night she probably was I, did, she do it, she did she do it did she do it that night i don't think so she had that guy come down oh, she she oh, hid she. in a room she yeah, she, she, she probably was pissed she, made a, she i think she made some sort of did she make a concession speech no i i don't think she, she sent that guy down to do it it was the next day or it was really 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 morning yeah. um but anyway, God's in control, and, and we'll, we'll let the process play out according to Roy Moore. So, wow. guess- yeah, he, said he, he said he didn't want to keep their, everybody there all night, and that uh, um, by the morning they'll know what the process is to That's start Kevin. the recount. And if it's within a half a percent, they're going to have a recount. So it, it's exactly what Alex was saying. Yeah. Oh, shit. So he, he didn't waste any time. So he, yeah, he is I'm doing that. Hard. Yeah. We're yeah. Paying attention to the Psalms and, and feet in clay and Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm Catholic and I'm I'm cool with, with quoting Christian shit, but <laughs> not, not when you fucking lost. I mean just yeah. give it you know, I don't know. We don't know that he lost Hey, there's still one percent left. Fake Less news. than one percent. Yeah. Well when Fox calls it and, and Fox called it well over an hour or so ago. Yeah. Like, well, of course, now Fox will be fake news as well. Yeah. So. Well, some some people on Fox News are fake news. Yeah. Oh. Ones, yeah. Yeah, but now the Democrats are like Fox because they called it for uh, Jones and not more. So. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, CNN called it early. <laughs> I can say it's fuck Roy Moore and he's diddling. And the horse, wait a minute, fuck Roy Moore and the horse he rode in on. Yeah. <laughs> Tell you what, I went to every mall I could find. <laughs> I sniffed as many bicycle seats as I could. Yeah, this is the guy who me And I mall. still didn't get enough votes, but we will recount. Is Don't this Santa worry. saying we that? We will recount. Is this Santa Claus uh, saying it's, that? There's still more girls down there at the, at the mall that we're going to pick up some more no, votes no, tonight. No, don't you notice that? He, we'll he, 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 wait a minute. He isn't Santa right now. He's Charlie Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, Patrick? I said we need an amen at the end of that speech that uh, Kevin just gave. Or <laughs> I just said Charlie Daniels. And that, that was damn good. That, you do look like Charlie Daniels with that hat on. <laughs> I got a black one too for the sad times. <laughs> he, he typically wears the uh, the lighter one, so. Yeah. Yeah. And bigger. But, but that's a fucking great. I didn't think about this, but, uh, Kevin. That's a fucking great cowboy hat. Yeah, I got that in Wyoming. Put that like, on again. Put that on again. Look at this, folks. I have, a, base, a, I have a baseball cap. You have a baseball cap, and I've got this. I, I'm looking at Norman well, I, Lear. I'm okay. going to quit my hat, John. Hi, like, <laughs> Alex. Uh, 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 anyway. You look uh, like a crook with the black one. Yeah, but you don't. That's a great, that's a good hat. That's a cool hat. Yeah. 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 Actually, uh, looks good on him. What are you saying, oh, Patrick? Yeah, so... Patrick's trying to say something here. Folks. Um, Not many people can pull off a cowboy hat. Yeah. Just in, in in a random 
deal like that. It 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 suits you. So could I pull off a cowboy hat? <laughs> I, I just need to get me a horse. <laughs> you know the pork pie looks good on you. This thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, this is this is. I said this is my Norman Lear hat. He always wears oh, hats yeah, like this. Uh, who who was the guy in Rocky that wore one of those? Uh, uh, Bert. Uh... Oh, Bert. Bert Young. Yeah. Bert, yeah. yeah. You know, well, I I bought this. I bought this on the streets of Harlem. Believe it or not. Yeah. Yeah. I buy most of my hats on the streets of Harlem. I find that they have good hats on the streets of Harlem. That's a good New York hat for you. Yeah. It is. I like it. It's a. It's one of my favorite hats. But. Uh, it, I don't, I find that, uh, you know, when I'm going out, I like a hat I can get rid of and, and like, you know, put in my pocket or whatever. And you can do that with a cap. This thing's too yeah. hard yeah. for that. I've, I've actually got, believe it or not, I've got some regular broad brim hats that actually fold up and you can put them in your pocket. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Alex, I've got that too. Yeah. I had this one yeah, the hat front of one, I left yeah. it in a taxi last yeah. week. And you could fold the top and fold it in and put it in your pocket. It was great. Tony I I had to lose it. this. <laughs> that, that, Tony that, sent me this hat. Tony sent me this hat. Did I send you that one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have one like that, but I have it in uh, leather. That's a hep cat. Yeah, I, sent yeah, I got a leather one, too. That's when off. you're going to a jazz show, right, Phil? Uh, yeah, really. I, no, I, I sent you one. Oh, yeah, I did send another one. An A's thing, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is. Uh, totally I didn't work the size out either, Phil. <laughs> uh, well, well, that's right. We're talking to the hat guy, Tony. <laughs> yeah, I'm should have gotten five from that cheap showing. Well, this hat. You know how much this hat cost me? Twelve bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, that's a good. And this this right. one cost Tony. <laughs> no, actually, it cost me nothing, Phil. I just said I'm taking a cap. <laughs> Tell me later. My cap is stolen. So I know, I a, a, anyway, we went to we, uh, we went down. We went, to, anyway. we went to court today, and thank God we didn't have to stay there for a hearing because that courtroom. I don't know who turned up the heat in the place. Maybe they wanted oh. to make lo, all the lawyers seem sluggish. Yeah. Really? You know? it oh, it was it was ghastly. But anyway, yeah. So we went down there, and we uh, yeah, we got uh, turned away. She, the judge, needed to needed to try a, mur a, a criminal case or something. So, oh wow! So uh, we got pushed to January okay. now with this thing. But there's a mediation thing on the 12th of January coming up, and our lawyer thing seems to think that he says, "Just have patience. You're going to come out just fine in this deal." Oh, good. You know, so I'm, I'm. That's all those pictures and stuff that you're going after, or whatever it is, the literature. No, what? no. Oh, something different. No, this yeah. is this is an action. This is for the apartment. Oh, okay. For the heart and soul of this apartment where we've been living. How many years has it been? I think over four years without paying rent. I, I went through something similar to you, Alex. Did you really? When I was in Pittsburgh, and um, what we had to do, my roommate and I put our money into escrow. Uh, you know, until it was solved. So the money never went to the, the landlord. And then it was, there was, there were a bunch of rules, like something was called stale rent. Like if you haven't paid over a certain time, like they can't get that. Anyway, when I went to court, yeah. the, uh, the landlord showed up with his maintenance guy and his maintenance guy put his hand on the Bible and basically lied through his teeth. And, but it didn't matter that the, uh, the judge said, but is it still like we had a lot of maintenance issues? Uh, basically, our our upstairs bathroom had leaked through to the kitchen, and the whole kitchen ceiling had caved in. Yeah. And we lived like that for a year, but it was okay. We didn't cook a lot. We ate out, you know, and, and had delivery. Where, where were you living when this happened? Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. <clears throat> this wow. was in Pittsburgh. So yeah. there's bad. So what happened was as they are in New York. Yeah, go ahead. So the judge said. Uh, but but what I couldn't get over was I thought this is a slam dunk case. What I couldn't get over was the maintenance guy getting up on this, you know, well, it wasn't getting up on the stand because it's just a small little room. Yeah. And he basically lied. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, dude, like, that's absolutely not true. And even if it were, I have the photos of the way we've been living for a year uh, to prove, you know, our situation. So the judge said, uh, he ruled that uh, the landlord and the, and the maintenance guys had to fix our apartment and the rent that we had in escrow was allowed to go back to us. We didn't have to pay. So we yeah, well, won we, the case. Well, we didn't, we didn't put any rent in escrow because our, our lawyer told us not to because 
This is an entirely different kind of case. We rented this okay. apartment from the guy who was living here. Oh, right. Yeah. But he wasn't able to do that. He was able to sublet it, but we didn't sublet it. We got what, it, we, in all, it, we, we signed a lease, and it was for it's three years, where sublets are, can only be two years. Uh, so uh, uh, he just said, look, you know, what are you going to save the money for? You're not going to, uh, and I'm thinking, you know, uh, the, uh, could the landlords claim this? And the lawyer said, nah, <laughs> he said, it's a little too late for that. Plus, you don't, you see, we don't have a lease with anybody. So mm. uh, what we're fighting for is to get a lease, but I'm not. So gonna... who have you been paying your rent to? Nobody. No, you haven't been paying rent. No, we're He's we're, we're uh, technically I think we're like squatters. Oh. <laughs> you know, we're very we're 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 very fancy squatters, but we're squatters <laughs> nonetheless. You know, um, no, because we never made any kind of deal with the landlord, and uh, we made it with this guy. And mm -hmm. so consequently, they, and they, they're not pushing us out of here because they can't. So it's in this limbo, this kind of limbo. But could they say, yeah, you can certainly still stay there, but you have to pay to the actual landlord? No. They can't say that? No. Well, he has a lease. With the other guy? With, with the landlord. Uh, the only lease I had was with this guy who rented the place. The guy didn't own the place. It wasn't his to rent. So where is he? Uh, he's living. He has a house in Connecticut. Oh. Yeah, and, and so he's, I guess he's he, on the hook for the rent. No, he's suing the land. No, he because he they, oh. he doesn't have a lease with them either. Didn't they ask him to move or something? Oh, he asked you to move. No, they asked him to move, and uh, uh, it, it, one thing led to another. It wound up with us staying here, and the whole thing winding up in court, and it's unresolved. You know, for how long has that been? It's been almost, I think it's over four years now. Oh, I, geez. I, I don't remember when it started. I think it was about four years. Yeah. Oh, my God. But, you know, hey, we're willing to pay rent. Just tell us, give us a lease and tell us who we pay it to. You know? Mm. Uh, oh, and, shit. And we'll make out the check. And tell us what it's for, how much it's for, <clears> because there's a question about, this is a rent-stabilized building, and it was rent-stabilized at the time that we rented it. And uh, what uh, they they were trying to charge uh, like twenty two hundred twenty three hundred for rent at that point, and that wasn't a rent stabilized price. So I mean, it's got all kinds of of nefarious crap. Would it be terrible if in New York, if an apartment didn't get rent for four years, they could raise it to market rate? <laughs> you know, they, they can't. They can't really do anything. What it's going to do is they're going to have to do whatever the judge says to do. Yeah. Or, or or whatever they finally decide to to make a deal with. The main fight is not with us and them, okay? The main fight is between the guy who owns the apartment and the landlords, okay? And once that clears, then we find out who's giving money to who, and then we put our hand out and grab the check, you know? It, it really, because we're suing um, the guy who rented us the apartment, saying that uh, he, and in New York, in a rent-stabilized apartment, if you do a thing and not live there but rent it out, and rent it out for much more than you pay in monthly rent there, that's called illusory tenancy and a violation of rent stabilization rules. And the penalty for that is to pay us back the difference between what he was paying and what we were paying him plus treble damages. And that's the, that's the <laughs> law. That's the law. <clears throat> so we're just sitting back, letting this thing resolve itself. And a, 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 a lawyer today said, judge. "Just you know, just if if you can see this thing out yeah. and and don't panic or anything like that, yeah, it's going to have a good ending." You know, uh, yeah. Can I play uh, yeah, judge, judge Judy. Huh? Uh, so I'll play Judge Judy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I I probably would say to the guy you rented it from. Yeah, I, I don't would say he, you said he owns it. He's the owner. No, no, no. It's the renter. OK, well, that was the term that was he there. was a renter, uh, but he was presented to okay. us as the owner. So so if I'm the judge, I would say to to that guy, OK, you're out of the picture and you you know, you have no stake in this at, at all. But, and then but, to you, yeah. I would say you start paying the landlord your rent 
you know, from next month. Uh -huh. And that's fully what we expect. The only thing that has to be established is what the rent can be. Because there mm -hmm. are rent stabilization rules about how much you can raise rent. There are a whole bunch of other mitigating factors, but the thing is, and also is, the there's thing is, uh, lawyer fees that he'd like to get from the uh, guy that rented him the well, place, the guy, the, plus yeah. damages. Oh, we also get lawyers' fees yeah. too. That's uh, <clears throat> it, we'll see. You, you know, but uh, I, it, it, the other thing is that it, that is, I guess, pretty telling is that we uh, we're we're not suing. We're only suing him. Uh, the landlords and I are on the same side. Because we're being sued by him, okay? It's very complicated. Yeah. It, it, it's the kind of case our lawyer. Thank God I've got a lawyer who just loves this kind of case, you know, <laughs> uh, and and has done a lot of work on it. Uh, and he says, "Don't worry about me doing all this work. Don't worry, you're not going to pay for it in the end." <laughs> he said, "You'll get you'll get your money back." Thank goodness you can afford the justice that it takes to carry the thing through, because most people wouldn't be able to do that mm -hmm. and so therefore uh they'd end up uh you oh know, you're absolutely away. right i mean yeah but uh, that that, that it, yeah and we're lucky also this wound up in supreme court they didn't wind up in housing court yeah. because while we would still probably prevail in housing court the fact is if you go to housing court and you prevail over a landlord say uh, you can get on a, on a renter's blacklist. Really? Yeah. In other words, if you if you if you live in New York, and you sue your landlord and you take him to the court, uh, and you lose, uh, you can be banned from ever getting an apartment in New York City. You get on a blacklist. I can't believe no, that. No, it's exists. absolutely true, Phil. It's absolutely true. Yeah. Whether it's visible or not, it's probably true. Yeah. The lawyer, or the lawyer who runs this firm, when we were first starting this whole thing, is, is we don't want to get in a position where you get blacklisted. Hmm. That was his first concern. Well, we wound up in Supreme Court, and they won't blacklist you for prevailing in Supreme On Court. On your and application, I'm not, and, I, and we're not suing the landlord. We have no gripe with the landlord. Did you see on your application the number nine that was in the top right corner? Why? That was what the Trumps used to do when a black family. Wanted to rent yeah. one of <laughs> that's true. That was what signaled that they were black. That's <laughs> true. Well, you know, I don't want to talk too much. Why they got sued? I don't want to talk too much about this thing. I've only given you generalities. Anyway, you can find out any of this information by going to the, the Supreme Court here in New York and getting all the papers and stuff on it. You know, so all this stuff is uh, is known stuff, but. Uh, uh, so I'm not going to call anybody names, but it's really the landlord and us against him. And and for now, for now, yeah. Well, it's I, a good I, thing I, you got yourself a good Jewish lawyer there. Alex. Got a good Jewish lawyer, yes, <laughs> named Mr. Rosenthal. Has, yeah. Has the guy in Connecticut insulated himself against uh, the loss? Uh, well, I don't. We don't know. But if he did insulate himself against the loss, and it was after this whole thing began. Ah, uh, you know, so it, I, you could defeat the. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, I mean, it, 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 well, I did say to to Marjorie, I said, we could win this thing big time. We could get like a, an award of somewhere around three hundred thousand dollars. OK, uh, but then good luck in getting it, collecting it, yeah. collecting it. So we're hoping, you know, that he wins against the landlord and makes a lot of money off of that, and then we can just be right in the middle as they're passing the check and grab it for ourselves. Well, the only thing he can win against the landlord because they were pay he was paying oh, no, over. Oh no, that, that's a whole different set of of arguments. I mean, he was right. he was given a what they called a non rent stabilized apartment when it should have been rent stabilized. They charged him much more than it was worth, and then he didn't register the apartment for not eight years. And if you don't register the apartment for eight years, it was $500 when he started. They didn't register it for eight years. If after eight years they didn't register it, they can't suddenly come back and say, oh, it's $2,100 now. No, it has to start at $500. Okay, the clock stops. So there are a whole bunch of things involved here. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting case. I just don't like being in the middle of it because, you know, I just want to. I just want to know. I want to be able to kick my feet up on the table and say, "Hey, we deserve to be here." Yeah. You know. 
you know, it sounds like another maybe two or three months you'll have a resolution. Oh, I don't think so. This has been going on for four, over four years for crying out loud. You know, I, I, I said to the landlord, is this going to happen anytime before we're dead? You know, he says, I think so. <laughs> you know, I think so. He said, I, I, maybe in the meantime, he said, in the meantime, you're living rent free. You know, so. And we consider any money we've spent with the lawyers, which is over $40,000, to be our rent. Yeah. You know. Hey, uh, I was just reading a, a uh, thing. It says it's official Bitcoin surpasses tulip mania, and it's now the biggest bubble in world history. Well, we um, don't know if it's a bubble or not. It's only going to be a bubble if it bursts. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is what they're predicting. Oh, well, I, of course when it's they going start, to burst. When they start talking about this, then people get nervous. They pull their dough out of it, and the thing just collapses. I you also know? read, Phil, that North yeah. Korea had tapped into that big, uh, Bitcoin deal. Oh, really? Yeah. What do they do? Buy Litecoin uh, from, from Matt? <laughs> Who knows? Maybe a rice coin. Who knows? Well, you know, knows? yeah. Um, I, I just, I still don't get Bitcoin, and I'm not going to try and figure out how it. Even the people on the money channels don't get it. They're still asking questions, and it, you watch it, and I'm going, holy crap. How do you try and figure that shit out? You know, it used to be the American dollar was based on gold. You know, they, they took the gold away, and things went out of control. Now you got something that's based on nothing. What is this? Is the Seinfeld of now money? you can buy it on Fox from what's his name? <laughs> from who? What's his name? Uh, what the hell is that guy's name that always advertises the coins? Uh, the 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 ah oh, shit! I can't remember his name. Savage? Uh, uh, no. Uh, no, it's a commercial, and they come on, and he says, "Oh, the uh, the older gentleman with the gray hair." Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, uh, Devane. Uh, Devane. Oh, Devane. oh, really? He's selling yeah. bitcoins now. No, oh, he's yeah. selling the silver oh, and the gold. He's selling yeah. the silver and the gun. They want everybody to turn in their IRS into gold and silver. Uh, that's because the you know the end of the world is coming. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, uh, people do make money out of that. It's just that, you know, I'm not going to buy it from Devane. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, you I, get two hundred free ones. Yes, Patrick. Well, I I have to admit I invested in silver recently. I bought a silver coin that was minted for Star Wars. So there you go. Uh, By the way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go see the new Star Wars movie on Friday. Oh, you going to see? It? Yeah, I'm gonna see yeah, it. Move it what what what'd you say? I'll see it when it's on DVD. I already know. I already uh, know all of the plot points and the spoilers. So, I, uh, you know, uh, talking about watching stuff, that marvelous uh, Miss Merkel or Mrs. Miss, uh, yeah, I watched eight episodes. That was a wonderful show. Oh, it's a great that show. Pollock was great. Uh, that uh, <clears throat> Ayub or whatever his name is, Tony uh, Shalhoub. A TV show? Yeah. yeah, Alex, you were saying a TV Wonderful. show the other day. Yeah. That was that it. One? Yeah. What's it called? Uh, um, um, uh, uh, Mar uh, Marvelous Miss... Uh, uh, I can't remember oh, now. Uh, I knew yeah, it the other day. M-I-R-K-I-L or something. Merkel. It's on yeah. Amazon. Yeah. Uh, if you have Amazon Prime. Does Amazon yeah. deliver there? N uh, yep. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. We, uh, we have something called souk.com. S O U Q. It was recently bought by Amazon, and okay. now uh, everything you can get on Amazon, you can get on Souk, and everything you could get on Souk, you can still get on Souk. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, yeah, the marvelous Miss Mrs. Uh, Markle, Mer Markle, Mar Markle. Yeah, that's it, right. Whatever. Uh, it's great. Also, you know, I I, I called it right for. Uh, um, oh yeah, uh, won a lot of Emmys. The, 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 the shape, the, the shape of water. Yeah. More and more Golden Globe nominations than any other picture. So was I right or was I wrong? I haven't seen it. And by the way, I saw the Louis C.K. movie. I won't say how, but it's a good thing he didn't release it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, you know, now, although it is, it is, uh, it is, uh, how can I say, it is uh, kind of prophetic because towards the end of the film, because his life has gone the way he didn't want it to, he said, I'm ruined in this business. I'll never be in this oh, business again. That's, what you're saying to that, that's in the movie he made before he ever had this whole thing happen. Um, anyway, I got to go. Hey, I've got to go. Say so, g- g- goodbye, yeah, Mike. Too, goodbye, man. Patrick. Goodbye, Bree. Good talking to you. Kevin, always a pleasure being with you. And Anthony, and of course, Phil Meyer, ladies and gentlemen. If yeah. everybody oh. would give a big wave goodbye, I think everybody would be happy to see you wave goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That is the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Citizens Panel for tonight. Got to get out of my Skype so that I can uh, uh, be, oh, let me see here. Hold on a second. Got to get rid of all the people on Skype. Got rid of everything. Okay, so the next show can have it. The next show, by the way, here just moments from now will be the, uh, uh, the intersection with Jack and Amy. Uh, and then, of course, at uh, midnight or 1 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time will be uh, Connections. I'm Alex Bennett. I'll see you again tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you happen to see her, tell her I love her, okay? Okay.